Ryan, what's the deal? Man, it's hot and awful. <laughs> and it's going to stay that way for at least a couple of days. Looks like maybe on Wednesday it'll drop back down into the 70s <laughs> and be a little more respectful. But the first thing I did after I got into the house yesterday after returning from two weeks on vacation was turn that air conditioning on. It was about 72 in the house. We had everything locked up, obviously, and my mother-in-law had come over and taken care of the cat, but it was still a little too stuffy in my house, so I got that AC cranked. It's running at 64, and I'm very happy now. Back from vacation. I was just going to say, welcome back. Obviously going to recap. Oh, yeah. Did, did did all the things, Lots man. Lots of journeys. Not a lot of relaxation, but... Uh, a lot of seeing things. Yeah, we, went, we went everywhere, man. I, the Johnny Cash, I've been everywhere. So, uh, recap vacation, obviously. Uh, we'll talk about that. We'll get to the Monday morning throwback. I think it's 2016. Eight years ago. We'll take a look back to something we did eight years ago. We also, uh, of course, we'll get to three ways with Shaw. Bad news, happy music, the friggin' sports. I think we have a, have a concert announcement this morning. We do, eight o'clock. Boy, oh boy! And I, I and I, 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 two things. I want to say thank you. I didn't get very many emails uh, while I was on vacation. That was nice uh, that you limited them because I would have just deleted them anyways. There were several that made You're welcome. their. That there was a couple that that got through the goalie, uh, but it's okay, and I deleted those happily. Uh, and I also want to say, what the hell? I asked you to water my plant, and you killed it. I watered that thing. It was bone dry and half dead when I came in this morning. I had to pick like nine different. I watered it. Well, I asked you... Puck because he goes, what are you doing? And I said, I'm watering the plant. I was told to water the plant. Well, you didn't water it. You must not have watered it on Friday. I didn't. It wa- must have didn't sat Friday here. Friday was bad. Well, <laughs> Friday was right. when it kind needed of a it. Mess. The most. Okay. Well, I'm trying kind to, I'm, tr- I'm going to try to nurse my little plant back to life that I've had in the studio now for over a year. Yeah. Uh, It'll be fine. Just just It'll sitting recover. in the windowsill and and just a little bit of water every once in a while. It'll but I recover. that was the first thing I saw when I came in this morning. And I well, first of all, the studio was a, a disaster. I mean, I don't know what the hell happened in here. It looked like a couple of two year olds were working. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And then I saw my plant. I'm like, all right, well, I guess I can't ever go on vacation again because I can't rely on anybody to take care of things around Golf here. Golf tournament aftermath. Ah. Act that's like what it that's, was. Yeah, like that's such a big deal. That's like what it so was. It was after that. that. I washed all the countertops off before I left here on Friday morning. You should have no seen. No kidding. It. You should have seen how dirty the wipes were after I came in this morning and wiped I, all the counter. Soap Lots of and brown. Water, Lots of brown. Friday morning before so much I left. Brown. <laughs> For real. <laughs> We got Shaw coming up in a bit, and, uh, of course, you can get in touch with us. Visit rockmornings.com for all of our contact info. You can listen live on the website. You can check out our daily podcast on there as well. Sounds like it's going to be scattered showers and thunderstorms throughout the area today with a high in the mid to upper 80s. More of your Rock Mornings coming up in just a bit. Rock Mornings with Brian, Gene, and Shaw. I am back from vacation. It was uh, (laughs) a... It was, it was one a, for the record books is it, what it, it was. It really was. Yeah, yeah it was. Uh, Two weeks on the road, seeing everybody doing all the things. Griswold-esque, <laughs> to say the least, Shaw. About 3,500 miles you said you put on? Yeah, so when we gassed up here in La Crosse on, fr- on that, what day did we leave? Saturday. That Saturday morning when we left town, uh, the wife hit the trip, you know, cl- cleared out the trip odometer, and... We drove all the way from here to out there and then back amongst, you know, all the other driving that we did. And when we pulled into the driveway on Saturday afternoon, I took a picture of the odometer and it was 3,545 miles, give or take uh, a half a mile there. So it was a lot of driving. Yeah. But there was, you know, obviously it's a long, it's a 24 hour trip if you drive straight through basically from here to New, New England. And then we did a ton of driving in New England because I have friends all over the place. I mean, we were, you know, we were in Wyndham, New Hampshire, and then we were in Nashua, New Hampshire, and then we went down to Salem, Massachusetts. We went down to Boston. We went up to Old Orchard, Maine. We went down to Hyannis. We were all over the place. Went up to Niagara Falls. I mean, we were everywhere. So it was was a hell of a trip and uh, lots of good times, lots of... Emotional stuff going on in my life with uh, family stuff. So it was, a you know, sort of a, our first time in nine years that we'd been back to New England, Shaw. So kind of had, important you make that trip. Yeah. yeah, we had a lot of stuff going on, situation with my mom and all that stuff. So it was just sort of, yeah, it was, <laughs> we really didn't get a chance to relax much. The last day that we were there, um, 
we were in Hyannis on the Cape, and we went to a beach. It's one of the the public beaches because there's several that are not public. They're only for people that, that live in town, and you have to have a town parking pass and all that stuff. Uh, and we laid on the beach um, for maybe, I don't know, 45 minutes, and that was about all we had for yeah. time before we had to get up. And then, you know, wife wanted to get ice cream. We had a few more things we had to do, and so, yeah, it was a lot. Uh, we started out. It was kind of neat. We uh, It was a last – it was sort of a – last minute addition to the tour or the trip we originally had planned to leave lacrosse and drive to cleveland because we were going to stay at the christmas story house uh, and that's about a eight to nine hours somewhere in that vicinity and then i happened to see that our friends in royal bliss and the lonely ones were playing at a bar in rockford illinois uh, on that saturday nights and so we made reservations to stay there and we ended up staying in um, Rockford, Illinois, saw the bands. It was good to see them in a parking lot. We won a 50-50 raffle at the bar for 500 bucks, which was cool. Good way to start the vacation. Yeah. Excellent way to start the vacation. A little spending cash. Wife grab. It was so funny. Like, they come out, they pull the number, and I and I had kept, I didn't, you know, we bought, like, it's like, you know, yeah, 40 you buy t- trips. Well, you buy, like, an arm's length, Shaw, so there's, like, 50 tickets in there, and I. You got to check did, all the numbers. So, well, I just said, here are the, here's the range of the numbers, and when she read off the number, I said, I think we're in there, and then I happened to look, and I said, that's us. And she hands me the 500 bucks, and my wife quick grabs it and puts it in her purse. She's like, <laughs> and, she, and I was going to go. Let's get out of here. She's like, we can't reinvest this. And I said, oh, come on, man. They got machines in there. No, she's like, we're on vacation. Yeah. This is going to be important. And and I don't know if you remember, Shaw, but before we had left, I asked Jean because her husband uh, had lived in Rockford, Illinois many, many years mm-hmm. ago. Where to get some food. Where to get some food. What's the best local place to eat? And she recommended Uncle Nick's. And it's apparently famous for their for their gyros. Well, we went to Uncle Nick's, but it was at like 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night after the show was over. And it was in a very dangerous part of town. I told you it was something. It's in a weird, janky sort of yep. parking lot in the middle of a, like four major roads. It's like an island. Yes. At least the, the one we went to. There's That's two, the one I you should have gone to. And we did. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> so we pull up, right? And, there, you know, you can't park in the lot, really. There's, not, there's a couple of cars there. And no. uh, so we parked on the street. And as we're getting out of the car and walking over to the to the, the restaurant, where you order, yeah, there's an armed guard, <laughs> like with an assault style rifle and a full vest, tactical gear, not like the whole like SWAT team thing, but like obviously an off duty officer who's been paid to be in the parking lot in case stuff pops off. And I was like, <laughs> oh man, the food better be really good because this is like one of the craziest things I've ever done. So you don't, there's no window. You actually walk into the restaurant now. Um, but there's no like seating or anything. You just walk yep. up to the counter. Yep. The guy takes your order, and then he goes, "Okay, what car are you in?" Oh, and that's I was, weird. I was like, "Because uh, we weren't expecting that." I was like, "Well, we're in the Equinox out there," and he's like, "Okay." And then he said, "We'll be out in like ten, fifteen minutes." So then I looked at my wife. I said, "I guess we go back to the car." And she's like, "Well, how do they know where the car is?" I'm like, "I don't know. They look around." <laughs> And then, sure enough, about ten minutes later, out comes knock, a bag. Out that. comes a bag with our food, and I and yeah, we took it back to the hotel. It, I will say, I, I'm sure it's better on a, on a on an afternoon situation, but the food was just sort of okay. Yeah, I'm glad I did it. I can cross it off the list, but the gyro was a mess. I mean, they slam it in. You know, it's it's. They, 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 first of all, there was no tomatoes on it whatsoever. There was way too much tzatziki sauce. And then when they wrapped it, they wrapped it so effing tight that it just sort of smushed everything. <laughs> and so when you open it up, it's just this, it's almost like it exploded. And so I'm just sort of, and whatever, I was halfway drunk anyway. So I'm just sort of eating it by yeah. hand. And my wife had a, a chili cheese dog that was also a mess. And, uh, sure. but yeah, but well, that was, but it was armed guards. And that arm, was Rockford. Yeah. Armed yeah, guards. Welcome to Rockford. Yeah. <laughs> Arm garden in a parking lot of a gyro place at 1130, Shaw. Perfect. Perfect way to <laughs> well, You saw the uh, best parts of Rockford then. I guess, yeah. But, uh, no, that was the start of our trip, and obviously we had many other adventures along the way, and I'll continue to, mm-hmm. to, to reminisce and, and tell you how it all went. But right now, Shaw in the newsroom, actual news. What's happening? Did anybody – is the election over? I the election is not over. Dude, no, I, don't, I honestly know nothing. I didn't look – You didn't at, miss anything. I didn't – I, like, looked at Facebook no, a little didn't. bit, and I, you know, and I checked the scores because obviously the – you know the playoffs and the Celtics and the and the, and you know and the Red Sox, but I in terms of like actual like news, I have no idea what's going on in the world. Well, that makes it a good vacation then. Uh, the Moldovan Olympic athlete arrested in Lacrosse County earlier this month has now been transferred to the Janesville area. To-
to face charges there. Vadim Vakarchuk appeared in Rock County Court on Friday, where he's charged with improper use of a card scanning machine. Vakarchuk and a second man, Ivan Bordian, were jailed in La Crosse two weeks ago in connection with the alleged fraud charges. On Friday, a Rock County judge set a cash bond of $5,000 for Vakarchuk and ordered him to return to court on Wednesday. Bordian also has been released from the La Crosse jail, but has another court hearing in La Crosse next week. Another virtual meeting about La Crosse school referendum plans will happen this week. A community engagement session takes place online Tuesday from 6 until 7 p.m. Another is scheduled in mid-July. The La Crosse District has already conducted a series of meetings in person and on the Internet to inform taxpayers about the $53 million referendum planned for November. The ballot issue proposes combining Spence and Emerson Elementary Schools into one building at the current site of the Hogan Administrative Center. It would also call for Hinchin students to be moved to State Road School. Strong winds pushed flames through dry brush in mountains along the interstate north of Los Angeles yesterday, and they're warning residents in the wildfires path to be prepared to leave if it explodes in size again. La Crosse County's first major wildfire of the year swiftly grew to nearly 23 square miles one day after it forced the evacuation of at least 1,200 campers, off-roaders, and yeah. hikers. The blaze, dubbed the post-fire, is just 2% contained. So far, there are no injuries reported, and the cause is still under investigation. Over 2,100 people showed up to witness the lacrosse steam softball team play yeah. and win its first ever game. A two-run fifth inning was all the steam needed to beat the Madison Nightmares 2-1 to one on Saturday at Copeland Park. Uh, they say the two teams switched venues yesterday, with this time Madison hosting, and this time the Nightmares exploded for an 18-1 to one win. The two teams will play again tonight in Madison and a doubleheader at Copeland tomorrow. What, oh. So what are we getting here in uh, in the area with weather? Because it's obviously kind of gloomy and it's We're going to get humid. some showers and storms today. Probably several yeah. rounds of thunderstorms the I way it looks. I my lawn so effing bad. And there's rain in the forecast pretty much every day this week. So, yeah, getting that lawn mowed might be uh, a matter of dodging the raindrops. All right. I should have done it yesterday afternoon, but... We had so much other. Cra- I had so much laundry and like crap to do. And well, I you got to get food. There's probably no food in your house. Did you have to go to the grocery store and uh, get I mean, some, do some laundry? We had pickles and ketchup and mustard, but we didn't have any actual food. Yeah. Um, you know. So yeah, we did some grocery shopping, and I, I when I got home, uh, living out of a suitcase for two weeks is not an enjoyable experience, especially Shaw when you're moving from one place to the mm-hmm. other. And I told my wife, I said when we got, I said, look, if we ever do this again and we go back out there for a week or ten days or two weeks or whatever it is, I said we're getting one place and we're staying there the whole effing time. I said we're not moving her. <laughs> Tired of moving every, around every well, like we the every mo- day you'd pack up every two to three days we were packing up and going somewhere else. And do we had my wife. I will give her credit. She admitted that when we got back, she's like, I packed too much stuff, and I said, I knew it. I knew it! I knew you did! You stupid suitcase weighs a million effing pounds. Yeah, well, that happens. And I got to move these stupid giant suitcases in. We brought a cooler because, you know, we wanted to bring some drinks in case we bought food and all that. And it's like, you know, and there's only so much room in an Equinox. So it's like, you got to make the money. And I was, dude, I was an expert by the end of it. I had it all mapped out. It really... My Tetris, OC- Tetris. Well, my OCD was super satisfied. It was, like, very nice to, like, have that I'm in my brain. I'm like, all right, this is going to go here. Well, there's a lot of sports to talk about, obviously. Yeah. We'll do that, and you can talk about the Red Sox game, too, because that must have been cool. Yeah, it was uh, It was a good time, it was, and they got a win, which was nice. So yeah. we'll do that in a bit. Right now, it's Dark Void. Rock Mornings. On air. <laughs> online. On the app. Rock Mornings with Brian, Gene, and Shaw. That is Animal I Have Become from Three Days Grace. The Brewers lost to the Reds on Friday, 6-5. to five. They beat them on Saturday, 3-1, to one, and beat them again yesterday, 5-4, yeah. on a crazy play at the plate to end the game. Everybody, though, this weekend talking about snoo. I know, threw out the first pitch. Well, threw out, he did everything, man. He threw out the first pitch. He was in the batting cages. He FaceTimed with Uke. He got in the booth and made a couple of calls. Oh, get that guy. Get that, man. It's a hit. That's a, he's in there. Get in there. He's trying to rhyme Jackson, Chur- what is it, Jackson Churio, whatever the guy's for, yeah. Churio with Sturio, yeah. and, like, it, I was like, what? I'm like, and he just, you know, they showed the video of him up there, and the two guys, you know, they're, of course, you know, professionals, and they're sitting up straight, and Snoop's just, like, high as F, just, <laughs> um, Snoop, man, I need that bat. I got to get that bat. <laughs> That's what everybody was talking about. Obviously, he played at the Potawatomi afterwards, but um, Brew now, uh, Brew Crew now on the road for a seven-game road trip starting Excuse me, with the first of three at the Angels tonight. That'll be at uh, about 8.30 on Late, ESPN+. Right, Plus. Yeah. No games in the NBA last night. Game five is tonight, however, at 7.30 on ABC. Dallas is in Boston to take on the Celtics, who are up 3-1 in that series. I cannot begin to explain how emotionally 
wonderful it was to be in a bar in New England with Celtics fans who speak and talk and act like I do. It was wonderful. Well, how about the Brady induction? Did you watch that in a bar? Good so gravy. My wife made me stop because I was very drunk and I was very emotional and I'm trying to watch the game and the Celts at the same you know the Celtics game and the Brady thing at the same time because they were actually doing it live on their uh, socials yeah, and YouTube sure. and I didn't I, I knew they were doing the, the pre stuff the red carpet stuff but I didn't realize the actual event other than Jay-Z and honestly who cares um, everything was was live and so I and I'm watching these speeches and all of and I'm like <laughs> and my wife's like you gotta stop it stop you can't be crying in a bar <laughs> <It's a brain. laughs> yeah so it was uh, yeah and I went back and watched a lot of it on my own and, and in a dark room with a lot of tissues but uh, NHL Saturday Edmonton avoided elimination by pouring in eight goals against Florida uh, to beat the Panthers 8-1 game five of the NHL finals tomorrow night 7 o'clock ABC and ESPN plus Edmonton at Florida Bryson DeChambeau got his second US Open win yesterday beating out Rory and uh, Ryan Blaney saved his best moments for the home crowd in Iowa, the first ever Iowa race. That's pretty cool. Uh, he had about 80 family members at the Iowa Speedway, uh, and he finally found his way into the uh, into victory lane. Uh, the win column by leading a career high 201 laps last night, taking the inaugural Iowa Corn 350 NASCAR Cup Series race in Newton, Iowa last night. So congratulations to him. Mookie Betts broke his left hand while he was hit by a pitch during the seventh inning of yesterday's game against the Royals. Former MVP and seven-time All-Star drilled in the hand by a 97, 98 mile an hour fastball. uh, Fell to the ground. Extreme pain. Dave Roberts, the manager of the Dodgers, didn't know how much time Betts would miss, but said the injury would not require surgery. So I guess uh, that's a good thing. And speaking of the NBA games and the Celtics, the round mound to rebound. Hanging them up. Says he's not going to work for anybody but TNT. Charles Barkley. Yeah, I know. I, well, we talked about they made, they alluded to some of this last week when on ESPN, right? Yeah. Like, what are you going to do if you're not going to, if that's not going to be a thing, you're going to join our crew. And he kind of wasn't saying anything. So now he's saying officially, I'm not going to do that. Uh, yeah. And I mean, we'll see. Obviously, the, we've heard a lot of people say they're retired. <clears throat> Brett Favre. Uh, and then come out of retirement, <laughs> Tom Brady. Um, so we'll see what happens, you know. But inside the NBA on TNT, award-winning, highly popular, Barkley, Shaq, everybody else. Uh, Barkley basically says, look, I, I don't, I don't want to do anything else. I would just want to be here with these guys and do it on TNT. The NBA is looking for a new TV deal with a bunch yeah. of different partners. And so we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But there you go. Sports, Rock Mornings, Brian and Gene. Yes, I did go to the Sox game. Uh not last Wednesday, but the Wednesday before. Yeah, how was it? And uh, it was good. It was beautiful to be at Fenway, walk around, had some street meat, which was nice. How much was a beer? Seventeen dollars. Two beers was about thirty dollars. Yeah. And but they're the they're the big uh, they're the uh, um, tall boys, so they're sixteen ounces. It's cashless and it's also serviceless, which. <laughs> Then they ask for the tip, and it's like, first of all, you're overcharging me for a 16-ounce beer. Second of all, you literally didn't do anything except for look at my ID, so you can go F yourself. What do you mean serviceless? Like so they- there's a guy, uh, at least, it's, uh, look, they have guys that walk around, and they sell you the beer with the you know the, the things, and I'll tip that guy. Uh, if I go to a restaurant and I get service from a wait staff, I'll tip them, certainly. I always do. I'm a very good tipper. But if I walk over to the, and they do this at Miller Park, too. If I walk over to the cooler, I get the beer out, and the only thing you're doing is looking at my ID, and I pay, and I the whole transaction is me, then you're not getting any tip from me whatsoever. You literally did nothing but stand there. So it was nice, though, because the, the place that we wanted to get beers from was right behind our seats. Uh-uh. Uh, had some Venway Franks, peanuts. Uh, got to watch the game. It was great. Yeah, good day. So, And rode the train there? Oh, that was a mess. <laughs> yeah. Well, the T line, you can pick the T line up uh, in different parts throughout Massachusetts and take the commuter rail into North Station uh, and then hop on another train and go over to Kenmore and get off that and you're right by Fenway. Well, the problem was the T line, the orange line that we took from Oak Grove, got done at Wellington and there was a problem on the tracks that they were working on. So we had to take a bus and they put you on like a coach bus and they drive you over to Fenway and they drop you off. And that was fine. But after the game, when the traffic is nuts and everybody's trying to, we were on that effing bus for an hour. It took so long. And then you get to the T-stop and everybody else is there and they're all trying to get on. Tra- it was a mess. It was a disaster. But but the game and everything <laughs> was good. So, yeah. Has anyone told you how amazing your business website is? I didn't think so. Do you think it's just sort of eh? Websticks, a Midwest family company, has taken thousands of websites from eh to amazing. And you only pay for the help you need with blocks of time that never expire. It's kind of brilliant. That's why we bought the company. 
Look for web sticks at MidwestFamilyLacrosse.com. Stunning sights, more clicks, web support from web sticks. A Midwest family company. Mass transit, man. Uh, we'll get to the latest from Five Finger Death Punch, and we'll talk to Scott Robert Shaw in a bit as well. Rock Mornings with Brian, Gene, and Shaw. Yesterday was Father's Day, but for you, it was just an ordinary Sunday because by virtue of you keeping it in your pants or low sperm count, you decided not to add to the planet's ongoing population crisis by not fathering children. A happy non-Father's Day to you, my friend. You slept in yesterday, followed by some online adult entertainment, enjoyed some cold pizza, and then played around a round of golf with the boys, drinks at the bar, and then you went home to an empty house filled with peace and quiet. And suddenly, you felt empty, alone, and it was amazing. I mean, sure, no one gave you a stupid world's best dad coffee mug, but because you don't have to pay for braces, daycare, or go you have so much disposable income, you can buy a whole apartment full of stupid world's best dad coffee mugs if you wanted to. Let's be honest, you've never stepped on a rogue Lego in the middle of the night or suffered the indignity of driving a Dodge Caravan. So a very happy non-Father's Day to you, pal. Or as you call it, uh, Monday. <laughs> ah, I love this. The best contraceptive you could ever have, Shaw, and not that we are ever thinking about having kids. I'm almost mm-hmm. 50. My wife is in her mid-40s, so that, that window has closed. Mm-hmm. But the best contraceptive, the best protection you can you can oh. have. Was your friend? They is, have two, right? Staying, Being with children. Staying with friends who have children yeah. that are younger. And especially in this day and age, there's all sorts of new stuff going on that I like because Donut, my best friend, Jake is 23, his kid, Jake. Right. So and I've known Jake since he was born. Right. And this was, you know, 23 years ago and things were a little different. Now these uh, my my friend, Jess and Charlie, uh, who live in Wyndham, um, we stayed with them for three nights and there is so much yelling. (laughs) Yeah. So much. It's like <laughs> nothing. Well, and I got an explanation on it because, you know, like I grew up as an only child. It was very quiet in my house, but I would go to Donut's place because he had three sisters. And so they had four kids and it was crazy down there. And I loved it because they were always beating each other up and having re- and I could just go down there and consume it and then go home to my, my sanctity. You know, so Jess's kids. Yeah. So she's got <laughs> she's got two young boys. And apparently, according to Jess, and I found this out when, when we got together with uh, my other friend, Brian, uh, who has a young, uh, young son named Brody, um, they were talking about how the kids are so loud because of the YouTube videos. They're saying that the YouTube video, and then they listed off all these YouTube channels. I have never heard any of these words before. I don't know any of these people on the YouTubes. And they're telling me that uh, apparently in the YouTube videos, the, the influencers or the YouTube people, Shaw, they have to be so loud. And the kids mimic that by being loud in their daily life, like all the time. So if they, even if they're just, you know, watching YouTube videos or eating ice cream, they're just, da, 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 da. it's like constant, man. I also found something else out, Shaw, that I wanted to share. And I don't know if my friends are listening, but Jess and Charlie, uh, <laughs> first of all, I want to say thank you. We had, a, we had a blast. It was a wonderful time. They live on a pond. It's more, it's kind of like a very small lake. And they got a boat, and we went out for a nice night cruise. Uh, you know, we, we we got really drunk one night on a lot of. They have a lot of expensive alcohol in the basement, and and your boy went from drinking beers to drinking alcohol, and that's they never were good. good hosts. They and were fu- fantastic. Lady. But I found something out about pooping Shaw that I've never heard before. And you well, know you're me, the expert on the subject. I love to talk about poop. I'm an expert. Uh, a guy who dealt with diverticulitis for many many years and finally had a surgery. Had a lot of stuff shoved up there over the years, Shaw. You know, BEs and all that stuff. If you know what I'm talking about, then then, then you get it. If you know, you know. But uh, apparently, one of the children has a new move when it comes to pooping. Okay. Never heard of this before. You're familiar with the squatty potty, right? Mm-hmm, it's I like am. a stool. Yes. It's set, not like a stool, like a stool sample, but like an actual like stool that you put on the floor yes. and it elevates your legs. They say that that's the appropriate way right. to, to make a bowel movement. Is We've that heard this one for rather years. Rather than having your legs, you know, sort of, you know, uh, parallel, uh, your thighs parallel to the floor, it's more like your knees are up closer to your Something chest. Something you could purchase and, and if that's the way it would go, on to go, yeah. Kid doesn't use a squatty potty. They don't have one. You know what the kid does? Mm-mm. Gargoyles it. That's what I'm calling it. 
Where does where do, what, what do you think the gargoyle is? What do you think that means, Gene? Well, is he like this? He's standing on the toilet seat. Standing? And then squats. All the way down like that. Yes, Shaw. So his feet are his not feet on, the, are on the toilet seat. They are not on the floor. I have never heard of this before in my entire life. Well, you got to be bendy. You got to be young and bendy <laughs> and small. Well, and there's issues there, obviously. There's bathroom. But, like, yeah. that was another reminder that I made the correct choice in not having children because I don't know if I could legitimately deal with that as a human being with a straight face. Like, I had the kid. The kid's okay. Love the kid. Kid, everything's good. Baseball, soccer. <laughs> yep, having chicken nuggets, going to the water park. Mm-hmm. Everything's fantastic. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, one day, you walk in, and the kid's gargoyling it on the <laughs> toilet. And you're like, what the hell do I do with this? How do I? Because you spent all these months and years, tr- you know, toilet training this kid, right? They got special toilets. And you give them, like, claps for flushing and do it all. You know, let me know when you got to make a BM. And, you know, you got to make... And then the, you walk in, and then you, what do you do? How do you correct that? Shut the door and walk out. Yeah. You, you just leave it alone, and that, now that kid's got to carry that with him? That's First date, wedding convers- night, you're like, you leave the door open, you've been dating someone, you move in, all That's of a sudden, probably what are you phase. doing in That's there? That's a phase. Is it just a phase? That's probably a phase. All right, the gargoyle, Shaw. I found out about the gargoyle. It's Oof. a new move. Oof. I assume this is a young child. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. That's yes. what I'm saying, Shaw. It's a phase. Yes. I had never you heard of such a thing. I, it blew my effing mind. I couldn't believe it. I had to have lengthy conversations with the parents about how this all went down. <laughs> It was intriguing to me, Shaw. I had to have every... It works for him, I guess. I needed to have every iota of information. I had to find out everything about the gargoyle because I've never heard of this move before. Mm -hmm. I've heard of the hover, you know, in a a public toilet. The women hover, right? They get a friend in there. They hold them up so that they they can... you never seen this before? Yeah, 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 yeah. But this... This was all new to me. I almost kind of want to try it. How long did you stay with them? Three nights. Oh, okay. Yeah, which was just about enough. Love them. So loud. Hey, Shaw, how was your father's day? Did you get a call from your sons and your daughter? Uh, let's see. I got a phone call from my daughter. I got a, a card from my daughter. And I got a text from my two sons. That sounds like about right. About right, yeah. Uh-huh. Hannah remembers, cares. Yep. Thanks for the time. Send, send to It was a cool card, too. It was a picture of the dude. Uh, you know, <laughs> Jeff Bridges' character in his robe and his white Russian. And it said, the dad abides and then Aww. inside it says to a, to one cool dude or something like that. So Aww. that was sweet. It made me laugh. And what did the text say? Happy Father's Day. Love you. Yeah, pretty much. Sup. 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 <laughs> yeah, right? Sup, Dad. No, it was, a good, it was a good weekend all in all. Started it out on the golf course uh, for Talk Birdie to me. Not a bad way to st- kick off a weekend on a Friday afternoon. Uh, there were some smoked meats involved over Ooh. the weekend. Had my first Texas Twinkie. Uh, wasn't familiar with that. Didn't know I'm that not. was a thing. What but, is that? So it's a jalapeno stuffed with uh, pepper jack cheese and cream cheese and then wrapped in bacon. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I don't I know if it was know fried it was or smoked that. or whatever. But Some people call them good. bullet shells or, or shotgun shells, mm-hmm. uh, but some people refer to them as Texas Twinkies. I didn't yeah. know about that. That sounds yeah. good. It was really good. My Father's Day was very quiet. I spent the day... Uh, <laughs> Recovering. <laughs> yeah, doing laundry and grocery shopping, Shaw. Welcome back to reality. Mm. Oof, the gargoyle. It's a new thing. <laughs> <laughs> Might be spread. Is it a thing on the internet? Is that something that I I didn't even Google it? I should probably check. Blew my mind though, Shaw. <laughs> Absolutely, I was. Look out for footprints on the toilet seat. Thought I had heard everything when it comes to poop, man. Thought I had uh, had a lengthy discussions about it, but then I found out about the gargoyle move, and again, I think like Gene said, that'll be temporary. Mm-hmm. All right. What else is happening? Uh, One suspect in a Holman area drug bust is being given another two weeks to find a lawyer. 62-year-old Stephen Cathy is accused of possessing fentanyl and meth following a home search in April. The public defender's office has has made over 600 unsuccessful contacts to try to find Cathy an attorney. Cathy asked for his $100,000 bond to be reduced, but that bond will remain the same. In court on Friday, Cathy asked to have police return some of the property that was taken from his house during that earlier search. One of the foreign men arrested in La Crosse County this month on fraud charges is now being held in a different Wisconsin County. Former Olympic weightlifter Vadim Vakarchuk is in Rock County, where he made a court appearance late last week after being transferred from La Crosse. Vakarchuk is also a former member of the Parliament in Moldova, but now lists his address as Illinois. He and a second man, Ivan Bordian, are suspected of using fake IDs at a quick trip ATM in the Janesville area. Bordian is still facing charges in La Crosse. Maryland's governor 
Wes Moore is scheduled to sign an executive order to issue 175,000 pardons for marijuana convictions. Mm. The order to be unveiled today will forgive low-level marijuana possession charges for an estimated 100,000 people. The governor says he sees the order as an opportunity to right a lot of historical wrongs. Recreational cannabis was legalized in Maryland last year. Ooh, we were smelling that in certain places over the weeks that we were gone. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Very legal and very out in public and very open about it, Shaw. Mm-hmm. Three-way. Rock mornings, Brian and Gene. More from my, my trip to New England, the gargoyle thing. Where was the highest gas prices? Was it higher out there in general? Uh, it was like, It was it all kind of in that 350 it, range you know, everywhere okay. we went. It was about that. You know, what blew my mind was seeing the price of cigarettes and I don't remember where the hell we were. I walked in and they had a big sign that said cigarettes are now seventeen fifty a pack. I was like, God damn. I remember when I when I drove out here from Whoa. New England in 03, it was November, and I still smoked at the time and I stopped at a gas station in, in New York to gas up and I bought a pack of smokes and they were like seven fifty and at the time I thought that was too expensive. Because in New Hampshire I was paying, I don't know, five bucks a pack or whatever, and now wow. it's like almost eighteen dollars. I was like, Whoa. You really going to want to have a cigarette if you're, you know, it's like, can I bump? No, actually, you cannot. You cannot bum one There'll anymore. There'll be no bumming. No bumming of the cigarettes. Um, Not at that price. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Rock Mornings, only on 95.7 The Rock. Rock Mornings, Brian and Gene. That is Nirvana, man who sold the world. Got a text from Selective Hearing. Stu said, you know what I realized while you were gone? It's amazing how quickly two weeks go by. I seriously thought it had only been one week. Getting old sucks. I don't know if that has anything to do with getting old. That's just a time <laughs> thing. I uh, got a text from someone who said, glad you're back. Jean sucks by herself. Oh, that was nice. Thanks for the text. It's very nice that you couldn't just keep that to yourself. Didn't your mother ever teach you that if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all? Appreciate that, though. She was with Shaw. I don't know if that guy missed the Shaw parts. Hey, if he... he Thinks it or she could be doesn't we don't know it's a text. It. People hate me, people hate you, whatever. Listen to free radio and, and hate on us. Thank you. <laughs> well, I did do my best. Uh your best. I did. Losers always whine about their best. We're pretty good too. Winners go home and f the prom queen. No. Yeah. Carla was the prom queen. Game five of the NBA Finals tonight on ABC. Celtics looking to close it out after getting throttled by the Mavericks in Dallas a couple nights ago. Boston up three games to one. Summer Olympic trials on NBC tonight, uh, uh, 7 o'clock. My wife very excited about that, swimming and all that mm, crap. Yeah. Name that tune on Fox, I'm followed by the too. 1% Club. The 49th AFI Lifetime Achievement Award is on tonight on TNT. It's a tribute to Nicole Kidman. Okay. Fallon. Talking to Eddie Murphy tonight. Obviously, Beverly Hills Cop 4 coming out. Jimmy Kimmel's got Austin Butler and Madison Beer. Colbert's talking to Anthony Fauci and Trombone Shorty. And Seth Myers has got Luke Wilson. So that's what's on the boob tube tonight. I'm going to be firmly planted in my couch in the basement where it's about 58 degrees watching Celtics hopefully, yeah, hopefully right? get their 18th banner. Yeah. 18th banner. So we'll see. Yeah, they got beat up bad by Dallas. <laughs> That was not fun to watch. The other two games, or three games, were great, though. They were, uh, man, I was in a bar high-fiving with strangers. And well, they want this, this series to go on longer than they didn't They want brought in the, uh, the extender, as they call him, Scott Foster, and he extended it. That's for damn sure. Uh, we got some sound garden in a bit. If you need something, reach out to us, rockmornings.com, for all of our contact info. Rock Mornings, Monday to Friday, 6 to 9. Sound garden, Black Hole, Sun, Rock Mornings with Brian and Gene. Dogs were well taken care of while we were gone. Mr. Cricket was at home by himself for two weeks, our cat. My mother-in-law came over and made sure he was fed, had water, took care of his litter boxes, all that stuff. Mr. Cricket was way happier to see us than the dogs were. I bet. He wouldn't stop meowing Saturday night and all day Sunday. Well, lonely, all over us. Quiet, lonely house. Used oh, yeah. to having people and dogs there. Once, and he, that once he realized that we were home and it was us, he was like all up in our business. Wouldn't leave us alone. Dogs, we went over to pick them up on Saturday and they were like, oh. Well, they'd been around other dogs and other people for the whole two yeah. weeks. Yeah. Mr. Cricket was alone. Yeah, he was uh, very vocal the last couple of days, meowing nonstop. I opened the door on Sunday morning after we you know, went to bed and 
and whatever. Sunday morning, I got up and I and he was right outside the door and he just started meowing as soon as I opened the door and he followed me all down, meow, 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 and just like and. He had food and everything, and everything was good, but he was just very upset that we had been gone for two weeks. He was telling you all about it. Yeah, speaking of uh, dogs and, and, and animals, uh, there's a Great Dane down in Iowa. Have you heard of this Great Dane? I doubt it. It's now the biggest and tallest dog in the world, according to Guinness. Ooh, you know, where, great, yeah. great Danes are big dogs, obviously. Uh, the dog's name is Kevin, by the way, which is a very, very funny name. He's now the Guinness World Record holder for the tallest dog in the world. They measure from the ground... To the top of their shoulder blades when standing on all fours. <laughs> so it's not necessarily when he's up on his hind legs and he's got his... He's standing know, like a dog. Right. He's in the dog position. Uh, the official measure- measurement was three feet, two inches. Standing on his hind legs, he's well over six feet tall, so he's a very big boy. Kevin the Great Dane in Iowa. This is Kevin. He's the tallest dog in the world. I do not think Kevin is aware of his fame. In fact, I don't think he's aware he is as big as he is. He's continually trying to squeeze into small beds and sit on top of us, do everything that the smaller dogs do. Sorry. doesn't know he's that big. He doesn't know he's that tall. <laughs> Kevin, he's never looked in a mirror. He doesn't know. He's just comparing himself <laughs> to his people. He doesn't understand that as far as Great Danes go, he's real large. <clears throat> World record holder down in Iowa. <clears throat> Apparently he's still afraid of the vacuum. <laughs> My dog's afraid of the vacuum, too. Kevin, even though he's bigger than the vacuum, a little bit afraid. Ours aren't necessarily afraid. They just don't like it. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Some in my... Caught in my throat there. <clears throat> but yeah, very happy to be back. And now we're taking Blake's dogs for I four know, days. I, so I heard like, it was no break. No exchange, break. exchange. <clears throat> yeah. We'll get back to Shaw here in just a couple minutes. Rock Mornings with Brian, Gene, and Shaw. Rock Mornings with Brian, Gene, and Shaw. Got a text from someone who said, glad you're back. Gene sucks by herself. <laughs> I said, LOL, she was with Shaw. I, they didn't mention you, Shaw. Sorry. That's okay. Um, Dennis said, tell that person to get bent. Gene did fine. Welcome back. Allie said, Gene, you did a great job while you were gone. While you are gone, don't listen to the rude ones. Nikki said to the jackass saying, Gene sucks. She did a great job. Played ACDC every morning. Have a great day, Gene. <laughs> See, that's what's Here important to her. T-Stead said, F that person hating on Gene. She and Shaw did a great job. Shaw, high five. You and me, high yeah, five. Yeah, nobody died. Come on. Uh, Brenda said, welcome back, Brian. Don't die on us now. I, I was trying to Jeez, talk about this giant over. Great Dane down in Iowa that just set the world record, and I was choking. Uh, as I mentioned, Gene, we got home, and the dogs, when we picked them up on Saturday, were not very enthusiastic about seeing us. They were like, okay, well, I guess we're going over Ten here Ten times now. over. Well, they were in a house with two young children and also several uh, other dogs and, and lots of people coming and going. So they wanted little... some quiet, maybe? Some quiet. i tell you one thing. Fenway looked plump, so she obviously <laughs> was getting into food that was not hers. We're very regimented at our house because Fenway is a trash dog. She's our little one. And she will eat anything. And Maggie, who is getting very old and, and, and sort of... Special diet to keep her <clears throat> feeling well. Not really, but she just she's very messy with her food. She kind of just shuffles it around, and some of it ends up on the floor, and some of it she eats, and then i got to pick it up, put it back in the bowl. While if Fenway catches me not paying attention, she will quickly dart over and grab whatever <laughs> nuggets land on the ground. And you could tell that Fenway was doing a lot of that while she was in someone else's care. She's very plump, so she's getting less Probably the food. kiddos were probably giving oh, her treats. Oh, and I'm sure they're getting treated to death. Uh, but our cat was very excited to see us when we got home, Shaw. He, uh, Mr. Cricket was a little apprehensive because obviously there was a lot of noise and activity in the house for the first time in several days. What's going on? Um, so he kind of hid out in the basement, and then once we got kind of unpacked and started you know, living a, a, a normal life with laundry and, and moving around and stuff, he came out, and he would not <laughs> stop meowing. He was very vocal. Lots to say. Oh, yes. And uh, the moment that I sat down after I kind of got, you know, we picked up the dogs, I had all the laundry going, everything was kind of put away, and the moment I sat down, he was like all over me and just mm-hmm. purring and rubbing all up against me and everything, so he was very happy uh, that we were home, so, and we're very happy to be home as well. That was, it's a bummer, uh, I miss it, it was, a, it was a great time, we did a lot of things. Um, Sounds like it. Yeah, I mean, and there's things that I, I kind of even forgot, like I was recounting the trip yesterday to some friends of ours, and I totally forgot we had stopped at Notre Dame. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we How had, was it? Kind of a letdown because you can't get into the stadium. Um, we walked around it. We didn't drive through the entire campus because we were really only there. I really only wanted to stop and see the football field. 
Um, and you can see it from the outside, Shaw, but you can't get in unless, obviously, it's game day or if they do tours and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But there was a guy. It was really cool because there was a security guard there, and he was letting in some athletes who were going in to work out in the facilities. And I said, any chance we can get in and see the see the, mm-hmm. the field and take a picture? And he said, no, no. And I, I said, all right. And I said, well, thank you very much. He said, what if I give him my phone? Can you go take a picture of it? And he said, I'll, he said, I'll do you one better. He said, I'll, I'll send you some pictures. He said, I, I've worked here for like 20 years, and he had thousands of photos from all over the stadium, you know, sun, sunrise and sunset and game day. And all, so he sent me a bunch of pictures. It was super cool. Uh, I just wish I had gotten inside to see it. But it's a really neat stadium. Um, obviously, in South Bend. How was the falls, Niagara Falls? Did your wife like that? Yeah, same thing. Uh, we didn't have a lot of time to spend, so we were only there for about an hour. Uh, and you really could spend a couple of days there. I, you know, if you're going to go, do the, the Maid of the Mist, get on the boat, go underneath it, see mm-hmm. all that stuff. There's a goat path that goes down right on the bottom of the falls, so you can see it from down on the bottom as opposed to up on the top. Obviously, there's the Canadian side if you want to try and get over there. There's a huge park that you can walk through. There's a cave thing going on and an old fireplace. So there's a ton of stuff going on. It's not just walking over and taking a picture of the falls. Um, But it was beautiful. It was a sight to behold. I haven't been there since I was a very small child, so I didn't have very fond memories necessarily of of the fall shot, but it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, I've never seen it. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you said a couple longer times spent there. You would have liked to have One, One last thing on the falls. Not as loud as, as you'd think. I, I was, I mean, it's loud. It's noisy. But, you know, you, you just see all that one. You're like, God, it just feels like it would be like a concert. You know what I mean? Oh, but it wasn't as loud. And, uh, yeah, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland was great. We probably spent four hours there. Um, got in right at 10 a.m. when they opened on that Monday and uh, saw all the exhibits. Um, Highlight. Probably could have spent uh, in, at, at the Rock and Roll yeah. Hall of Fame. One thing that where you're like, okay, that was super cool. Uh, Joey Ramone's jacket. There you go. Dimebag's guitar. Um, the lyrics for Fight Fire with Fire by Metallica. Uh, Michael Jackson's red jacket from the Thriller, Thriller. video uh, was super cool. It's just, it's so much to take in. It's almost sensory overload. There's a lot of people, so you don't have a lot of time to, you know, gawk. You're kind of getting shuffled around a lot, you know, and there's, it's hard to see because it's very dim inside the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Not a lot of light in there because they don't want to have the uh, memorabilia fade. Uh, So they keep the lights low. So if you have trouble reading in low light, it's not for (laughs) you. You're going to have a hard time in there. Um, They got a cool little thing where you can make your own band sticker uh, on... I want to say it's the second floor, second or third floor. Uh, yeah, where you like go design to design your own. You thing. design a yeah. They they have set up. You know, it's everything set up, and you just sort of put your own. Mm. But it's cool, and then you can everybody takes their stickers and puts them all over the walls and stuff. They have a kind of neat interactive thing. If you play instruments, it's uh, it's like a jam band session type thing, and they have like a, a bunch of rooms that you can go into and play drums and guitar and all sorts of different instruments. And they even have like TV set up where you can take a YouTube class. And they've got people that work for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that can, like, you can jam with them and stuff. And, yeah, we weren't there for the entire day, so we didn't get to see a lot of that. But and then they got a cafe and a gift shop and all mm-hmm. that crap. But, um, yeah, it was, uh, it, was, it was great. It was good times. So uh, more from my trip. Obviously, did a lot of things, <laughs> squeezed a lot into two weeks. Uh, so there's plenty to talk about. We'll get to sports in a couple minutes right now. It's Pearl Jam Wreckage. Rock Mornings on 95.7 The Rock. Rock mornings, Brian and Jean, that is... Has anyone told you how amazing your business website is? I didn't think so. Do you think it's just sort of, eh? Websticks, a Midwest family company, has taken thousands of websites from eh to amazing. And you only pay for the help you need with blocks of time that never expire. It's kind of brilliant. That's why we bought the company. Look for Websticks at MidwestFamilyLacrosse.com. Stunning sites, more clicks, web support from... A Midwest family company. Latest from Pearl Jam, that is Wreckage. Brewers took two out of three from the Reds over the weekend. Including a crazy finish to yesterday's game. Throw at the plate. Reds could have tied it. Sent it to extra innings. Assuming the Brewers hadn't wouldn't have scored in the bottom of the ninth. But <laughs> got the job done. Uh, now they're on the road for a seven-game road trip, starting with the first of three against the Angels tonight. That's about 8.30 on ESPN+. 
NBA Finals continue tonight in Boston. Dallas at Boston. Celtics up three games to one in that series. Look to close things out and hang banner number 18 with a win at home. Edmonton avoiding elimination over the weekend. Eight to one win on Saturday over the Panthers. Game five of the NHL Finals tomorrow night at 7 o'clock on ABC and ESPN+. Plus. Edmonton will be at Florida for that one. Elsewhere in sports... 12 years after she qualified for her first Olympics, 27-year-old Katie Ledecky did it again on Saturday night. Became only the ninth American swimmer to qualify for four Olympic Games. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Uh, more Olympic qualifying going on tonight on NBC if you want to catch that. But, yeah, we're almost there, man. July 26th, I believe, the Olympic Games starts. Now we're doing all the qualifying. and Caitlin Clark getting fouled every single time I turn on the Internet. She's getting harsh fouls. She takes it all, you know, like a champ, saying that's the game of basketball. Everybody else, uh, special whistles and this and that and mm-hmm. the other thing. And it's like, man, spotlight's going to be on her, though. I mean, she had to have known that was coming. It seems like everybody else in the WNBA sure. is unhappy about her fame. Well, this is what the league is like. Is that it? I don't think so. I think the league was not like this until she came along. And I think people want her to, you know, get her comeuppance or you know pay her dues or whatever you want to call it you know and i'm of i'm of the same mind as charles barkley you know she's not the first to do it but she might be the biggest to ever do it and you guys are going to treat her like trash because you're not getting your own shine and so your only way of like showing off is to hard foul her all the time i heard some statistics and i can't do it justice last i mean week, they're moving just, games to yes. nba arenas because of yes. her not because of you yes that's okay it was, it was everything it was ticket sales jersey sales viewership i mean it was just it was she's nuts. going to help the entire game nuts. the entire game you know like and i get it right not everybody wants to be on the caitlin clark train that's fine but like at the same time you see some of these games and these people who well, you've never heard of you know what i mean like it yeah. will help your paycheck in the end. It will. Eventually, or the next generation of those players, yes. you know? Yeah. We got uh, the Monday morning throwback coming up in just a bit. Also got to make a concert announcement just about 8 o'clock this morning, so tune in for that. Continue to recap my vacation. Uh, trying to think what else. Yeah, so... Uh, seafood a lot of seafood pretty much all seafood i would hope so yeah i mean other than the armed guard um, euro and other than the the, the euro and (laughs) maybe some breakfast stuff where there wasn't any seafood available but yeah we pretty much uh exclusively ate seafood had a delicious lobster roll there's a place right up the street from where i grew up called the lobster boat in merrimack new hampshire uh, famous for their lobster rolls it was delicious well you haven't been out east in nine years did everything change a lot you know, there's uh, certainly a lot of changes. Yeah, Obviously, you drive around, so. you see different businesses, you see some things uh-huh. that are different. Um, but it's nice to, you know, to see a lot of the stuff is still there. I mean, it's it seems not like a completely different world. Um, I had forgotten how to get places, obviously. You know, you even though I had spent the better part of my life in Nashua and, and Manchester and Concord driving around and stuff, it was still difficult. You know, you get back on the roadways and you're like, where the hell am I going? Plus, they changed the the numbers on some of the exits down in Massachusetts. So I was like, uh, that's not where it should be. But no, yeah, a lot of seafood. I had a shrimp scampi at a place called the Black Cat Cafe in um, Hyannis, Massachusetts, right on the... It was... I still... I'm still thinking about it. Almost, you know, a week later. It was so effing good. So good. Yeah. (laughs) My friends out there are like, well, you want to get a burger? No, I don't want to get a burger. (laughs) have that in the midwest i was trying to tell my wife that too you know she gets like a baked potato with her with her seafood and i'm like honey con- i'm like honey concentrate on the seafood i'm like don't eat so much of the baked potato you'll be fine <laughs> monday morning throwback is coming up rock mornings with brian gene and shaw maybe this will refresh your memory since 2008 brian gene and shaw have been your wake-up specialists like old times huh now it's time to take a look back go way back it's the monday morning throwback every monday morning throwback. going back to 2016 2016 eight huh? years ago shaw been a minute I'm, I'm sure this was during Bad News with Happy Music. It's uh, actually two stories. 
One of them was about goats, and the other one was about a guy shooting himself. Oh, okay. With his own gun. Sounds like something we would have during Bad News, Happy News. Yeah, it does. And uh, (laughs) the first one, it piqued my interest because it was an idea that I had. A running of the goats, Shaw. (laughs) Similar to the running of the bulls. Right. Where you unleash a bunch of goats. A lot safer. Much safer. They'll still have but you. And apparently my idea was stolen by a town in Kentucky <clears throat> who did a running of the goats, but it got a little askew as some of the goats made their way about their own business as opposed to what they wanted them to do in this town. Kentucky town's first annual running of the goats turned into goats on the run when a group of the animals made a 24 hour dash they for They stole freedom. my idea? <laughs> They stole my idea. This is it. This is baloney. And I'm this, calling in the Air Force or something. Wrong, horribly wrong. No, yeah, it, it didn't it? go wrong. It just goes. You know, easy they to took to off. Find okay, so goats. they've got a park there where they keep these goats as land control measures, lawn control measures. I'm sorry, they, they eat the grass. So they had this idea. They're going to run the goats from the farmer's market to their home at the park where they live for the annual running, the inaugural running of the goats event. Well, the goats decided they would just go wherever the heck they wanted, and it took them about 24 hours to round them up. Yeah, the goats got loose. They stole my idea, Sean, (laughs) the running of the goats. What could go wrong? You can hear our entire discussion about this running of the goats along with the gentleman who shot himself. I don't know if you remember this story, but it was a guy who shot himself while cleaning his gun and didn't realize it till three days later when he changed his shirt. Okay. Was wearing a dark shirt, didn't realize he was bleeding out. Oh, my gosh. Jeez. What? Until three days later when he changed his shirt and saw the blood all over himself. Yeah. So there's uh, another story in the Monday morning throwback. Bonus. Hear it, in its, hear it in its entirety on our website uh, or on our app, the Monday Morning Throwback, each and every Monday right around 7.40. Eight years ago today, uh, not today, but eight years ago, 2016, a uh, running of the goats that went went wrong. Three days, he just spends in the same right. shirt, never took yes. it off, never took a shower, never cleaned himself it's up inter- a little bit. interesting that you mentioned that because that's the exact same thing you said eight years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, you're consistent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Monday Morning Throwback. Cloudy. When, what's the sitch with the rain here? When are we expecting it? Well, some areas are getting pounded right now. In fact, sirens are going off in Eau Claire, I'm told. Um, but the National Weather Service warning of the possibility of some severe weather today with multiple rounds of thunderstorms expected, particularly in southeast Minnesota. They're getting it now. A severe thunderstorm watch is in effect for several counties, including Fillmore, Houston, and Winona, until 10 a.m. Storms, some possibly severe, are expected this morning and again mid to late afternoon. Some heavy rain is possible, especially over southern Minnesota, they could see up to two inches of rain, possibly leading to localized flooding. Uh, severe thunderstorm warning in, a, in effect for some parts of our area. Uh, that includes parts of northwestern Winona, as well as parts of Olmstead and Wabashaw counties. A storm system currently stretching about from Red Wing to Winona. Uh, damage to roofs, siding, and trees uh, is expected, according to the National Weather Service. Yikes. The wet weather in areas north of La Crosse is causing rivers to rise again. Cities upriver are predicting higher water levels for later this week. And La Crosse is expecting the Mississippi to stay steady at 10 and a half feet until midweek. Then the river stage is likely to rise to 11 feet again by Friday and possibly crest close to the 12 foot flood stage by next weekend. A Madison man could spend the next 20 years behind bars after being found guilty of stealing almost half a million dollars from the government. During the coronavirus outbreak, the Department of Justice announced the federal court jury convicted 36 year old Eric Upchurch on multiple charges of making false statements on more than a dozen PPP loan applications. Prosecutors argued that Upchurch deposited $400,000 in loans directly to his bank account and then laundered the money through cryptocurrency. He is set to be sentenced on August 30th. The deadly implosion of an experimental submersible en route to the deep sea grave of the Titanic last year. Is that a year ago today? Yes. Has not dulled the desire for ocean exploration. Where the hell did the year go? Well, actually, it's tomorrow. uh, Marks one year since the Titan vanished on its way to the historic wreckage site. We got a new billionaire going down there, too. Yeah, somebody else wants to try. Uh, The Coast Guard quickly convened a high-level investigation into the disaster, but they say no results will be released for at least another two months. The implosion killed the submersible's operator and four others. Family, friends, and fellow sea explorers plan to hold both public and private ceremonies this week to honor the victims. 
Don't catch me getting on something with a Super Nintendo controller. No. No Remember way. that thing was just rigged together with duct tape and a joystick? and Yeah, I know. And then we're having memorials for these idiots? I'm sorry. I don't celebrate stupidity, Shaw. That's just dumb. You get in that thing, you see a Super Nintendo controller, I'm out, bro. Not even getting in that thing. I'm out. I'm not getting in it because it's going to the bottom of the ocean. Right. Speaking of the ocean. Yeah. You know how I feel about the ocean, Shaw. Yes, that's where the sharks live. It is where the <laughs> sharks live. And I was... Where the sharks live for a couple of days at the end of our trip. Did you dip your toes in? We were on the Cape within earshot of the Kennedy compound. Took the JFK Museum tour. We were on a beach and we could clearly see the Kennedy compound. They have tour boats. They'll take you out there. You can get your pictures. Bring you right back, Shaw. We didn't do the tour boat. But I did dip my toes into the ocean for the first time in almost 40 years. Wow. And you survived. My grandparents, when I was growing up, my uh, my father's parents, they had a, a cottage and also a house on Cape Cod. And I vividly remember going down there because at a lot of these places on the Cape, they have a shower that's outside of the house. Mm-hmm. So that when you get back from a day on the beach, you can rinse off and hose off before you go in the house with all the salt and the sand. And it's just a kind of a unique thing oh, no, that, yep. and it's not unique to Cape Cod. I mean, there's people on lakes and rivers and stuff that have that as well. But I just remember that from being a kid. I'm like, oh, you got a shower in the backyard. What's that for? And my grandparents had to explain it to me and whatnot. So, uh, but that probably was when I was around eight or nine years old. And that would have been the last time I ever went in the ocean. Because shortly after that, I saw the movie Jaws and that ended it for me. <laughs> I refused to go in the ocean, but I did wade in to about ankle depth. And I bold. and I and I made it safely to shore afterwards, Shaw. Did your I, wife go actually? No, she she the the one beach that we were on where I went in the water was really rocky. Um, the tide was low, so the the sand which is up on the beach part was you know she was walking on the rocks, and so she didn't go. She went about knee deep. Um, when we were at Hampton Beach, uh, the tide was way out, and she was she was having trouble because you know the the sand starts to dissipate beneath your feet, Shaw, and so she's sinking, <laughs> and so she didn't want to spend too much time out there because she was afraid she was going to get swept away or whatever. <laughs> but but yeah, your boy, Shaw, Mister uh, well, John. Yeah, I feel, I'm very pleased with myself. Oh, I'm officially uh, a survivor of the ocean, oh, Shaw. Boy. I don't know if that's a thing. Can I get a medal or a badge oh, yeah. or a ribbon? No. I mean, everybody's getting trophies for everything nowadays, Shaw. Can I get one? No. That I, I, I set foot in the ocean where all the you dangerous bear- stuff is. Was that is? the video? Because you didn't step foot. Oh, I did. Oh. Oh, I Your did. Your toe barely got wet. I was still in the ocean. Were Big you in the ocean? For you. You yes. weren't in the ocean. I was Not in the ocean. The, I've been just recently in the ocean. No, you haven't. <laughs> Or that girl lost her leg in her hand last week. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. No shark attack. I was prepared. I had my 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 pocket knife show. I was ready to go. Ready. Poke him in the eye. Yeah. All these like locals out there, and I'm ready to kill sharks. And they're just like out there having a day on the beach with just the sun flashing around and the sand. And there was a fa- it was funny with there was a family walking. They, you know, a couple of kids and mom and dad, and they had a little dog, and they were walking along the beach while we were there, and I kept going, Pip it, Pip it. <laughs> Don't you know the danger you're putting yourself in? Yeah. Oh, I knew. I I, I knew full well. But I uh, took it in stride. I'm a real man now, Sean. <laughs> Congrats. You're welcome. You're talking to a real man. Mm-hmm. A seafaring man. Oh, jeez. Come on. <laughs> what? I was in the ocean. <laughs> Proud moment. Yeah, sure. It was only up to my ankles, but I still went in. Normally, I wouldn't even get close to the wet toes. sand. I wouldn't even say ankles. Dude, you went like this with your big toe. I'll show you videos of sharks eating people in, you know, less than three feet of water. It's right there in the like movie. that. You didn't even have to dry Right off. there, Chief Brody says 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 to the guy, he's like, isn't it true that most shark attacks happen in less than three feet of water? He's like, hell yeah. That's where I was, less than three feet of water. Not good. I was, my life was in danger. But I somehow survived. Rock morning on your rock station. Guns and Roses, welcome to the jungle. Rock mornings with Brian and Gene. Concert announcement in about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Big one. Let you know who, what, when, where, why, how, all that stuff. Also get to uh, another three-way with Shaw. 
Bad news, happy music, the friggin' sports. Cheryl said, good job, Brian, on your survival of the ocean. And Jeannie did a great while Brian was gone. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Yeah. Did you have good weather? Uh, It was back and forth. Um, Gloomy. Sunny. Temperature-wise, it was great. Okay. It was, you know, mostly mid to upper 70s, maybe low 80s. So it wasn't very hot, wasn't humid. Pretty mild temperature-wise, but uh, sort of back and forth with the clouds and, and the sun. The end of the vacation, the last few days, we had some really nice weather when we were on the Cape. So that was good. A lot of driving, though. I tell you what, <clears throat> people talk bad about Chicago drivers in Illinois, and it's not that it's not bad, but there's something in the water in Ohio. Have you ever driven through Ohio? No. On the highways? Jesus effing Christ. I I drive like a maniac. I'm an angry driver. I'm from the East Coast. I'm this aggressive. This is Cleveland area? Or? Yeah, so anywhere in Ohio, where there, wherever we were <laughs> on, the, on I-90. It was, I, I saw more bad driving and more crazy driving than I've ever seen in my entire life. It was nuts. You know, Chicago, you get backed up. It's crazy. You know, you get a yeah. lot of traffic. It's really bad. People, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this was like criminal stuff. You know, I drive fast and I'll stay in the lane and not, you know, and I, you know, once you get out of my way and all that stuff, but I'm not like weaving in and out and going 9,000 miles an hour. And like, I mean, these people were crazy. I don't know what they're smoking in Ohio. Is meth legal there? Because it seemed like a lot of the people driving were doing meth. No, I don't know. It was nuts. Note to self. My wife and I were both remarking. I was like, man, I thought Chicago was going to be bad. But Note to self, not driving there. No, thank you. Maybe it was mm-hmm. just the days we were going through, but something was going on. It was. I was shocked to find that out. Also, if you have to stop at one of the service areas, the travel plazas, do it in New York. They're very nice. They actually take good care of them. The ones, in Pen- the ones in Pennsylvania and Indiana, dirty. Not good. Broken toilet seats. Not good. Mm-mm. But the New York ones were great. Nice. At least on I-90. Yeah. Uh, more from my trip out east plus a concert announcement in just a few minutes. More of your rock Wait mornings up. coming up in just a bit. That is going to sound so good in person at Copeland Park and Event Center on Saturday, September 14th. The third and final act in the Ultra Rock Summer Concert Series is highly suspect with Des Rocks and Dead Poet Society. Now that show again is on Saturday, September 14th, the third and final show of the Ultra Rock Summer Concert Series. Kicked it off earlier this summer. Got Bush and Jerry Cantrell, Candlebox and Tim Montana coming in August. That's August 3rd. And then about a month and some change later, it'll be highly suspect coming to town for a show at Copeland Park and Event Center. Now, you saw them one time, was that it? Well, we had them here That's, in town years ago before they made the big time. They blew up after People we were had paying them. $10 tickets for that show. <laughs> yeah. That's how long ago that was. <laughs> and now, uh we saw them at Rockfest. They kind of made their triumphant return to the stage at Rockfest. I think I want to say it was last year. It was either last year or the year before. My years get muddy. I can't remember mm-hmm, them all. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now they're coming back to town. They're going to be at Copeland Park and Event Center. Highly suspect with Des Rocks and Dead Poet Society. Saturday, September 14th, the artist pre-sales begin tomorrow at 10 a.m. Now you can go to the various websites of Highly Suspect or Des Rocks or, or uh, Dead, Dead, Dead Poet, Poet Society. Society. You may not see a lot of information about this because I know they're rolling out a whole tour package for the nation. It's going to be a nationwide tour, and they roll that out, I think, later on this morning. But we got exclusive rights to announce the show here in town uh, a little bit early. The venue pre-sales for the Tex Club members at Copeland Park and Event Center begins on Thursday at 10 a.m. until 10 p.m., and that's an online purchase only. And then the general public on sale will be this Friday at 10 a.m. Now, the show, uh, of course, is Saturday, September 14th. It'll be uh, similar pricing to the shows in the past where it's 55 bucks to be in the pit, the stage front pit area. Those are limited as, you know, they have been for these other shows. There's a, only a certain number of those tickets when they're gone, they're gone. And then uh, you've got the $37 on-field GA and then the $32 grandstand tickets, which are up in the in the seats, obviously. Details and information online at copelandevents.com, but the big announcement for the final act in the Ultra Rock Summer Concert Series is 
Highly suspect with Des Rocks and Dead Poet Society on Saturday, September 14th. Yeah, general tickets on sale this Friday. Text Club tickets a pre-sale on Thursday. If you want to sign up for their text club, you can do that. You can find out all the information if you go to a Copeland events. Yes. Their website will have all that. Third and final act. Looking forward to it, man. Kicked it off in May. Got another show in August. And then another final in show in August in, uh, September. So, yeah. Details again, copelandevents.com. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot us a text, rockmornings.com for all of our contact info. We'll hear from Des Rocks in just a few minutes, and we'll talk to Scott Robert Shaw as well. Rock Mornings. On air. <laughs> online. On the app. Rock Mornings, Brian, Gene, and Shaw. And in case you missed it, show announcements just a few moments ago. Highly Suspect is coming back to town, Shaw. Been cool. a minute. We had them before they got nominated for a Grammy. That's how many years ago it was. They oh, used it was a- they used pictures from our show, that show that we had at the Cavalier Theater all those years ago. Mm-hmm. It had to have been over a decade ago. They used pictures from that show that Bob Good, our photographer at the yeah. time, took in their next CD jacket. So when they produced their next album, they used our photos in their CD jacket. It was pretty cool. It was very cool. Pretty cool connection. Yeah, and we partied with them, and they were great guys, had a blast, and uh, the tickets were like the tickets were later. under $10, and we sold it out, and then all of a sudden, bam, nominated for a Grammy, and then forget it. Main stage of all the shows they're doing, big headlining act, and they're mm. coming back to town as Act 3, the final act of the Ultra Rock Summer Concert Series. That show is going to be on Saturday, September 14th. It's highly suspect, Des Rocks, and Dead Poet Society. Artist pre-sale starts tomorrow at 10 a.m. You can go to Highly Suspect's website or Des Rocks' uh, website or Dead Poet Society's website for more information on those. And then the Copeland Park pre-sale starts on Thursday, 10 a.m. It's online only. And then Friday is the general on-sale show. So going to be a hell of a good time on Saturday, September 14th, our third and final show of the summer over there at Copeland Park and Event Center. Did you hear about your boy Gordon Ramsay and his accident? Yeah, he fell off his bike, but, like oh. Joe Biden. <laughs> Almost. What is, it, what is it with these old guys right? and these bicycles? Maybe they should stay off. What, did Joe see some ice cream on the ground, went down to lick it? I don't care how short the journey is. Uh, it, it, even more important when cycling with children, they've got to wear a helmet. Apparently, he... Uh, sustained some damage, significant da- damage to his helmet, apparently, and, and took place and, and went to the trauma center. No broken bones or anything, but big bruises and, you know, scared him, I guess. Scared the hell out of him. Well, yeah. Sounds like he got messed up. It's raw, you donkey! <laughs> I know you like him, so. It's hilarious. When Incredible he trauma surgeons, doctors, nurses, and hospital that looked after me this week. They were amazing, but wear a helmet is his message, Shaw. Or don't ride a bike. Save you from a bike accident, right, Shaw? Well, I suppose that's one way to do it. Don't go in the ocean. You don't want to get bit by a shark. <laughs> so I tell people all the time. I went in, though. I braved it. I'm a survivor, Shaw. Congrats. What, I what, knew you could do it. What color ribbon do you get for that? <laughs> Every time I went around the old oak tree, mm-hmm. something like that? No. Three-way, Shaw, in the newsroom. What else happening? Well, we have stayed dry so far, but some areas to our north and west yeah. have been getting absolutely pounded uh, this morning. Uh, that storm system passed through Red Wing, and Winona is now making its way off to the northeast. Eau Claire, uh, a lot of red on the radar right now as that thunderstorm moves through. One of the foreign men arrested in La Crosse County this month on fraud charges is now being held in a different Wisconsin County. Former Olympic weightlifter Vadim Vakarchuk is in Rock County, where he made a court appearance late last week after being transferred from the La Crosse jail. Vakarchuk is also a former member of the parliament in Moldova, but now lists his address as Illinois. He and a second man, Ivan Bordian, are suspected of using fake IDs at a quick trip ATM in the Janesville area. Bordian is still facing criminal charges in La Crosse. The suspect in a January shooting in La Crosse continues to ask for a bond reduction. Linnell Carter is charged with attempted murder for allegedly wounding another man in the leg outside a La Crosse bar. Carter's bond originally was set at half million dollars, but it's now down to 5000 He said in court on Friday that he wants some of that bond back, but no change was made in his bond. 
The public defender's office has not yet found a lawyer for Carter, and he'll have another hearing scheduled in late August. The U.S. Surgeon General is calling on Congress to require warning labels on social media platforms, similar to those now mandatory on cigarette boxes. In an opinion piece in the New York Times, Dr. Vivek Murthy said social media is a contributing factor in the mental health crisis among young people. He said the use of just a warning label wouldn't make social media safe for young people, but would be part of the steps needed. Social media use is prevalent. Up to 95% of youth between 13 and 17 say they use a social media platform. More than a third say they use social media almost constantly. Mm. A, a new public radio station has signed on in western Wisconsin, and it's named after a former lacrosse broadcaster. WEPP went on the air Thursday in Rice Lake, and Wisconsin Public Radio says it will provide service that has been lacking between Eau Claire and Superior. Mm. The new station plays classical music, and it's part of a recent expansion and realignment of public radio service around the state. The call letters, WEPP, include the initials of Gene Purcell, who was a longtime manager at WLSU Public Radio at UW Lacrosse before becoming executive director of the Wisconsin Public Broadcasting Network. Purcell was killed in a traffic accident in Madison three years ago. The first ever summer softball league for collegiate players got underway over the weekend, and lacrosse's team pulled out a win. Mm -hmm. More than 2,100 fans showed up to witness the lacrosse team's first game and their first victory. The steam, the softball equivalent to the loggers' baseball team. The steam pulled out a 2-1 to -one win over the Madison Nightmares at Copeland Park on Saturday. Yesterday, the two teams played again. This time, Madison turned the tables and won by a score of 18-1. to -one. Two more games set for tonight between the two teams in Madison. That doubleheader... Um, uh, uh, there will be a doubleheader beginning at 5 p.m. at Copeland Park. So but, welcome to the steam and congratulations. Very cool. And there's only four of those in the Northwest League. Four teams four currently. Teams. They're working to expand the yeah. league. But yeah. how cool is that? And Very by cool. the way, loggers are in Eau Claire taking on the Express two nights this week. I believe tomorrow night and Wednesday night there's games at Carson Park if you want to see uh, the yeah, Northwoods League. I don't, know, I don't know if you saw, but I'm going to be up there on July 11th for a game. With you're the gonna, loggers, you're gonna and have the to run the board again. Yeah. FYI, okay, you're gonna have to take care of things down here the day after. But I'm gonna be hammered on so July 11th. That's again the loggers are there. Uh, I don't think it's a logger game. It's a, an express game. But I'm gonna get out of here. It's a day game, Shaw. So on July 11th, I'm gonna leave here, Lacrosse. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna fly up to Eau Claire. Not fly, but I'm gonna I'm gonna drive really fast to Eau Claire. Mm -hmm. uh, get there for the first pitch for the uh, express game. We're gonna be on a party deck with some listeners. You can register, by the way, to win those tickets. Uh, at 92.9thex.com, the website for our sister station up there in Eau Claire. And then you can join me on the party deck, and then afterwards we're taking a Pulse party bus, and we're going to hit some bars and some breweries. What day is this? When July is this? 11th. Rochester. You're playing Rochester. Okay, and then, yeah, and then uh, then the next day I'll be up there broadcasting from Eau Claire while Gene's back here in the studio in Lacrosse. So good times all around, man. Going to be hitting some baseball games. Can't wait. Yeah, so the loggers up in uh, Eau Claire, they've been on a... Uh, uh, away stand by the way they don't play again until uh i think this thursday at home uh, at they've been home. gone for like eight days yeah and as we mentioned uh just a few moments ago speaking of the loggers and in copeland park here in lacrosse big show saturday september 14th just made the announcement highly suspect coming back to town to headline the final show in the ultra rock summer concert series with des rocks and Dead Poet Society. Here is Dead Ro des rocks now i am the lightning rock mornings with brian gene and shaw Rock Mornings with Brian. Has anyone told you how amazing your business website is? I didn't think so. Do you think it's just sort of eh? Websticks, a Midwest family company, has taken thousands of websites from eh to amazing. And you only pay for the help you need with blocks of time that never expire. It's kind of brilliant. That's why we bought the company. Look for Websticks at MidwestFamilyLacrosse.com. Stunning sites, more clicks, web support from... A Midwest family company. Gene, that is Dead Poet Society. Before that, Des Rocks. And then before that, Highly Suspect. All three of those bands going to be in lacrosse at Copeland Park and Event Center on Saturday, September 14th, the third and final act in the Copeland Park Ultra Rock Summer Concert Series. Tickets go on sale, general admission, all that stuff on Friday. There is a text club presale that begins on Thursday. The uh, venue, the artist uh, presale starts tomorrow at 10 a.m., so... Look for that on websites and all the stuff. But highly suspect coming back to town. The friggin' sports! Brought to you by Exposed Penis. 
Is this soccer exposed penis? Oh, yes. What are you supposed to wear under a kilt? Uh, some sort of shorts, I no, would hope so. Nothing. No, you're not. Nothing. You're not supposed to wear anything nope. underneath. Except unless you count your socks. Just as something. But you in the breeze. Yes, very much you in the breeze. And that's what this Scottish soccer fan was all about. Him in the breeze. He was in the breeze. <laughs> he well, wanted breezy. He was also about drinking some beers, and so were his buddies who flipped up his kilt live on television while they were making merry. <laughs> Did he want to make merry? Scottish football fans in the party mood before their Euro 2024 opener against Germany. Embarrassing a television reporter when they lifted a guy's kilt, revealing his wedding tackle live on the television. Welt chief reporter Stefan Schwarzkopf mingling with the kilt wearers who had traveled to Munich. Said he, quote, gained some deep insights. <laughs> <laughs> The guy was wearing a Germany kit along with the kilts, appeared unmoved as he danced with a beer. His penis just out there in the sun, having having a day. Is out there, just Jerry? out there and loving it. Being a man isn't about the penis. Oh, well, yeah. It was for this guy. It was out. The reporter admires, uh, admiring the kilts and says, quote, really, really traditional, I would say. I'm not just talking about their football jerseys, but naturally also about their Scottish skirts, the kilts that are worn here. They are part of it. What is surely also part of it is the beer. And then all of the sudden, then it's out. Then, then it's there's out. penis. Now that penis oh. had a mole on it. I'd recognize that penis anywhere. Uh, yeah, it was on television. As Elaine would say, he took it out. He took it. <laughs> well, it was, he didn't take it out. It was just out. He took what out? It. It was out. He took it what? Out. It was out. It was out. On TV <laughs> for everyone to see. Oh, that and guy. And enjoy. <laughs> Scottish football fans wearing kilts with nothing underneath the way God intended. <laughs> Did that guy want to have all that on the television? I Probably don't know. Not. I think he had so many beers in him, he didn't really give a rip. <laughs> didn't really give a rip. That's what I think. In retrospect, do you think he gave a rip? Like the next day, do you think he's maybe, like, well, I didn't need anybody, to, everybody to see that. Maybe when mom and dad or the wife or the kids That's what I'm saying. get an eye full of that or find out about it on social media, then mm. maybe, yeah, there's a little bit of regret, but not when you're full of beer and cheering on your team. Yeah. You're yeah. a face painter? Yeah, show my support for the team. <laughs> you're a penis bearer? Yeah. Yeah, show yeah, my support so. for the team. Yeah. Friggin' sports brought to you by penis. <laughs> Scottish penis. Bad news, happy music is coming up. So is the latest from Ozzy. Rock mornings. Only on 95.7 The Rock. You're about to enter a beautiful, exciting, <laughs> A cockroach living in your nostril. Now that's just nasty. Add in some... Haven't pooped for 30 days. Poop is raining from the ceilings. Poop. And sprinkle in some hashtag Florida man for flavor. Florida man. Florida man. Florida man. Florida man. Florida man. Florida man. Florida man quits his Burger King job, steals all of their chicken nuggets. It's bad news. Bad news. With happy music. Let's rock. On a Monday after I got back from a two-week vacation, Shaw, mm -hmm. thrill me. I shall. Uh, <laughs> are you going to hold your nose when you vote for president this year? A quarter of Americans hold unfavorable views of both President Biden and former President Trump. That is the highest share of double haters at this stage in any of the last 10 elections. This closely watched block has nearly doubled in size since 2020, making this fall's Trump versus Biden rematch the most dreaded election in modern political history. Top strategists suggest the race is likely to be decided by just 6% of voters located in six swing states, including Wisconsin. Many of them will hold their nose when they pick a candidate they dislike in November. Residents living on a big chunk of property in Utah are living almost entirely off the grid. 
tenants each buy their own two-acre plot where their only choice is to grow all of their own food as the uh, estate has no municipal power system and no sanitation utilities. A share of the co-op costs at least $35,000, but that's before residents need to build a house, a barn, install a septic system, produce their own solar energy, dig a well to the fresh water dozens of feet below, and build a greenhouse. So it's like the Amish. They have to do all that stuff? In order to live there, yes. So These like are people HOA. who are trying to get away from society. Uh, These costs could run up to at least another $235,000, which the organization blames on the COVID insanity that's driving the cost of building materials Mm. up significantly. Now, as Americans consistently share their losing faith in the nation's institutions, those that have made a new life here in Utah have essentially set up their own self-surviving nation state. Residents vote and assume roles on its board of directors and have a court-like system to solve arguments through what they call the Committee of Disputes. Like many in Utah, a majority of those in this commune are followers of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The co-op has even found a way around using cash. Many trade in their own produce, like bread and livestock. Uh, More than 70 children reportedly live at the commune who are all homeschooled by their parents, hoping to raise the next generation of anti-society residents. So do you marry your daughter off to get some more land, or you get a goat out of the deal? It's, it's a barter system, you know. What's the I mean, sitch here? With whatever the, you can arrange. Whatever. Yeah. They have Julia, but I'd like some squash and a goat, please. <laughs> yeah. What can I get for this uh, <laughs> wonderful eggplant over oh, here? Man. Well, it'll get you two cucumbers, and uh, yeah, and maybe we'll give you my thirdborn. For of course, that's happening in Utah. And join our farms right. together. These these are people who are upset with what they think is the wokeness of society, and they're trying to start their own. Uh, you got to be pretty woke to dig a hole and build a barn. Right. You got to be woke all damn day. Mm-hmm. You don't get no naps. <laughs> Uh, After finding someone unconscious and calling emergency services, a worried bystander may turn to YouTube for a reminder on how to perform CPR. But that site is running ads before videos that show how to perform the life-saving intervention. These ads are up to three minutes long, and some are only skippable after 30 seconds. So you can't save someone's life because you got to watch the ad. you got to watch an ad first. A woman in Germany died earlier this year after her getting CPR was delayed by her helper having to sit through 18 seconds of ad on the platform. Mm. Concerns have been raised that the ads are delaying someone receiving care in life-threatening situations when every second counts. These videos are largely from groups including hospital systems, paramedics, and CPR trainers. Yeah, maybe Yeah. let those ones go without ads. Yeah, right? Maybe. I think they're going to have to look at that. Yeah. Uh, if you get pulled over in Minnesota, don't be surprised if the cop starts out by asking, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Officers in Minnesota need a new icebreaker because there's a new law that bans them from asking, do you know why I pulled you over? There are two reasons for that. The state doesn't want people making spontaneous confessions, and they don't want officers asking people questions except in a formal interrogation setting. Mm. Police have faced pressure to ban all of what they call pretextual stops, where a cop will pull a driver over for a minor infraction and then conduct a search to to look for something more serious. These kinds of stops have led to some dangerous escalations. That's the reason behind the change in law. Good news for Waffle House servers. They're getting a raise to $3 per hour. That's before tips. The minimum wage for tipped employees is $2.13, as long as they're able to make at least seven and a quarter uh, when you include tips. And for $3 an hour, they get to put up with this. Police in South Carolina looking for a customer who showed up to a Waffle House in Myrtle Beach while drunk. The man was drinking and being belligerent, then pulled out a cigar and started smoking it. A server confronted him and snatched the cigar, taking it behind the counter. The customer freaked out, hopped over the booth, and followed the employee to the back of the restaurant. Then he pulled out a knife and punched her. And after she Mm. fell to the floor, he kicked her in the head and neck. Oh, nice. Thankfully, he didn't actually cut her with a knife, but someone who was with this guy tried to break it up, and they got cut, leaving a trail of blood behind. Boy, not hanging out with that guy anymore. That person left with the assailant, so apparently they weren't too badly injured. No word yet on the server's condition, and it doesn't sound like the police have made any arrests yet. 
A recently fired police officer in Nashville has been arrested now on charges of felony official misconduct after allegedly appearing in an OnlyFans video while on duty. Is this the breast guy? Yes. Officers arrested former officer Sean Hartman at his home. He was fired back in May after a video was discovered and detectives identified him as the person in the Nashville Police Department uniform who took part in a mock traffic stop in an OnlyFans skit when he groped the exposed breast of a female driver. Mm. The investigation found the video uh, was made in a warehouse parking lot while this officer was on duty. Oops. Those breasts can be quite large. You yes, can't can, be doing that probably, huh? It was, you know, it was all fake. It was all for the cameras. Right. But uh, again, but he, he was, was wearing his, his uniform, uniform and he yeah. was on duty and at the time. He was on duty. Well, I do have big breasts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me check and see if you do, mm-hmm. ma'am. Ma'am, or do you know why I pulled you over? You can't ask me that. <laughs> Uh, Patricia, uh, Patrice Miller, a 71-year-old woman, had been harassed by an aggressive black bear in her northern California town for months before it broke into her home and killed her last Ooh. year. When they first found Miller's body mauled and partially eaten, they first believed that she may have died of natural causes and that the bear broke in, attracted by the scent. Oh, I was... I was like, how do you die of natural causes and get half eaten? I was like waiting for... It's not natural causes. But that doesn't neighbors, sound natural at all. Neighbors had reported seeing the bear uh, often by her house. The woman even installed steel bars across her windows to oh keep the bear God. out. Before so she it ultimately, was really getting harassed right, by this thing. Broke the door down. And did she contact like the bear people in, yes. in the town about Hello, getting rid of the can bear? Can you get rid of this bear? I, I don't know if she... I mean, she obviously took steps by, by installing metal bars on her windows. I don't know to what in degree you know, law enforcement or whatever was involved. you got to assume there's a phone call being made to the SBCA or some kind of humane society first before you start putting in bars and doing home upgrades to keep this bear out. <laughs> I, I mean, this bear had a thing for her. Her death is the first documented fatal black bear attack on a human in the Golden State. Deputies found the woman's door broken, which appeared to be how the bear got inside. Uh, she apparently had a vegetable yeah. garden and compost and didn't always throw her trash out immediately, uh, which yeah. likely is what attracted the bear kinda, to her home. Yeah, a, but bear. you're getting so harassed, you got to put bars right. up on your window and stuff. Right. Isn't there, like you said, a DNR or a right. bear? Somebody in somebody, between, somebody in between, between the bear it. and then the, the bar. So she doesn't die? Well, yeah. and the, relocate it, like drug it, move well, it. Well, that's what I mean. Like you call somebody and like, hey, look, man, this is legit. I got to put bars <laughs> on my window. Or we're we're going to have a problem here. Does she not have a gun? <laughs> I don't know. Not sure. Man, uh, oh, obviously man. she didn't use it if she did. Was it the bald-headed bear of Clare County? I don't <laughs> no. know. I think it was a different it's a bear. cocaine no? bear. Was right. it was. <laughs> yeah. Boy, she, whew, that is kind of natural causes, too, after the bear eats you. I mean, that's nature, right? I mean, There's a lot of harassment. A 71-year-old woman in Florida is accused of killing a man after getting angry with him for not cleaning up after himself. Police responded to a home in regard to a shooting. When officers arrived, they found a man with a gunshot wound. He was taken to a hospital and was pronounced dead. Investigators determined the suspect, Patricia Whitehead, and the victim shared a residence. She became angry with the man, saying he did not clean up after himself. The victim was leaving the home when she heard him slam the door. She then went and grabbed her gun from her bedroom, uh, left out the door, and shot the man multiple times. Oh. She was arrested and charged with first-degree murder. This house is clean. Yeah, that house wasn't clean. Mm. That's was mm. the problem. Uh, a Hertz rental car customer accomplished a new feat when it comes to rental car company disservice, actually being charged for running a red light before he'd even rented the vehicle. This person rented the vehicle on May 15th at the Calgary uh, airport for a period of six days, starting at 10.30 p.m. However, the agent at the airport logged the rental as starting at 10.30 a.m. Now, it would have been impossible for the customer to have had the car at 2.33 in the afternoon because they were in flight on an American Airlines airplane. Mm -hmm. They provided copies of their boarding passes. Hertz agreed with them about the rental start time. They removed the extra day's charge, but still refused to budge on the red light or the extra fees associated with the extra day. They only removed the base rental charge. Hmm. That's, uh, I think you could get out of that one. And not sure who needs to hear this. But deleting a text on your phone might not mean it's really deleted. Here's someone who didn't know that. A middle-aged guy in England is suing Apple after his wife found a bunch of text messages that he had sent to hookers. Not sure it needs to be said, but they're divorced now. He says he turned to prostitutes in the last few years of their marriage and would text them using the iPhone texting app iMessage. 
but he was careful to always delete the messages so his wife didn't see them. Unfortunately for him, he only deleted them from his phone, and she eventually found them on the desktop computer they shared. She filed for divorce less, less than a month later and took him for pretty much all he's worth, and now he's trying to sue to recover that money. He thinks Apple should have to cover what he lost in the divorce, as well as his legal bills. He says if she found out he was cheating some other way, they might have been able to work through it. But seeing the text was just too brutal of a way to find out, so she couldn't forgive him. Is he not claiming any kind of responsibility right, exactly. in this whole situation? <laughs> his lawyers are even looking into making it a class action lawsuit if other men come forward and say the same thing happened to them. You are a smelly pirate hooker. <laughs> Look in the mirror, sir. It's not always everybody else's fault. I refuse to take any responsibility for texting all those hookers. Right. It must be Apple's fault. That's pretty much the argument. All right. You're getting you're that close in relationship with them that you've get that you're texting back and forth. <laughs> Apparently. Who texts a hooker? That's what I'm saying. Usually that's like a Craigslist email conversation. No? Like that's a I got your number, you got mine, let's do this text thing. Is it like a sub? <laughs> Apple. Damn Smiley you, Apple. Smiley face. <laughs> Is there emojis in those text well, I'm messages? I'm sure there's lots of emojis. Eggplant. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't go out with you guys tonight. I got to text these hookers. <laughs> I was going to go watch the game at the sports bar, but I'm busy texting hookers. Mm-hmm. Was it multiple hookers? Yeah, multiple. Wow. Mm-hmm. How many years? The last few years of their marriage, he said he would turn into <laughs> prostitutes. At no point did he think maybe this is not a road I should be going right? down? Uh-huh. No? It must be Apple's fault. Of course. Damn you, Apple. I would have gotten away with it, too, mm-hmm. if it wasn't for you meddling iPhone services. Bad news, happy music. Thank you, Shaw. Sure. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Hooker. <laughs> Guy loves himself some hookers. That was something... Didn't see any lot lizards. I was kind of bummed. You know, we drove a lot, obviously, 3,500 miles. And a lot of it was on the highways. So and truck stops, truck lot of tr- lo- Well, lo- and like, like I said, the travel plazas, they have upped their game because they want families to feel comfortable. They want them to stop, spend some money, use clean bathrooms. Variety of food choices. Right. Nice market, a, you know, mm-hmm. lot, a lot of that. But, like, there's still places where, and I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. I'm just saying I didn't witness it. There's several places where it's like a just a parking lot for truckers, and there's no gas station, nothing. It's just like an empty spot with a bunch of pavement, and there's like, you know, 10, 15 trucks, and they're all lined up, and they're obviously taking a break from driving. I didn't see one where there was any ladies of the night walking around. No texting around. going on? There was no texting? I didn't, no, I didn't see one. I was <laughs> I was kind of let down. I was hoping to see a lot lizard just walking around looking but for nothing. business. No, didn't see one. I have to rely on my buddy Autumn to tell me all the stories about them lot lizards. Insider information. ACDC. Mm-hmm. Rock mornings. Monday to Friday, 6 to 9. Call. Hello. Email. I tried emailing you. Text. So many ways to check in with us. Check, check. We rely on you guys for traffic updates, requests, and all sorts of other stuff. Check this out. Rockmornings.com. Visit the website for all of our contact information. You can listen to the show live. You can check out our daily podcast. Email from my guy over at Copeland Park and Event Center with all the info about the show coming up. We just made the announcement earlier this morning, about an hour ago. Mm-hmm. Highly suspect with Des Rocks and Dead Poet Society, Saturday, September 14th at Copeland Park and Event Center. Tickets on sale later this week. Text Club pre sale. Thursday, regular GA on sale Friday. Brady texted in, said, why does Shaw's voice always go up on the last word when he reads when reading the news? Did he get that from journalism school because he sounds just like all the talking heads? You mean inflection? Is that what he's talking about? He's talking about inflection in his voice? Or would you prefer that he reads it monotone with no emotion whatsoever? Always goes up. Always goes down. Or you could just talk like this and never move your voice up and down, and you could answer Brady's text questions all of the time. Sorry, Brady. Your life must be perfect if that's what you're worried about this early in the morning. (laughs) I have nothing else to be concerned about, just the inflection of Shaw's voice. 
the most concerning thing to me right now. Not my mortgage or my bills. Mm. Or if my truck's going to start. And then sometimes it's down. Uh, let's see. What do we got? Bunch of people defending your honor. We had a person earlier say uh, that, I suck, basically. that you sucked while I was gone. Why bother? T-Stat said, F that person for hating on Gene. Her and Shaw did a great job. Had a person text in. I was talking about the crazy drivers in Ohio. Yeah. More so than in Chicago or anywhere else you drove. More yeah. so than in Boston, more so than in any other big I, city. I don't know if maybe I was just shocked. You know, it might be one of those expectation things where you didn't have any expectations that people drive like maniacs in Ohio because you assume it's in Chicago and then you get to Ohio and it's like, what the hell is wrong with these people? So it was way worse in Cleveland than it was in Chicago or Boston. Well, and my wife did all the driving on, on the way out and all the driving on the way back. She preferred to do, She has trouble... I know. With the way I drive. So it's uncomfortable for her, especially on the highway, to be in the passenger seat. And I honestly, it's nice for me. I can take a nap. I don't have to constantly, I don't have to deal with that. You know, the anytime I make a lane, she, you know, it's like she so freaks she out. was in Cleveland driving? Yeah, she drove the whole way. Like I said, I didn't drive once on the highway other than in Boston and New England. But the whole way out, the whole way back, she took care of it and. She was happy and, you know, whatever. But somebody said El Paso has to be the craziest place for driving. Speed limit in town is 50. They go 80, weaving across five lanes from one ramp to another. Hmm. I said it was like that in Ohio, but it was on the highway where the speed limit's 70, and they're doing 95 to 100 and weaving in and out of traffic. Michelle said, I totally agree about Ohio driving, Brian. Was there a few months ago for a concert? Didn't ever go back again, especially Toledo. Holy crap. A recliner... Had fallen off a truck because he was switching lanes so fast. We almost got it hit by it. Guy never even slowed down. I will say, I don't remember where we were, but there was a guy who didn't pack the back of his pickup truck properly. And as we passed him on the highway doing, you know, 80, 85. Was it a mattress? He was. A kayak? He was walking and he had whatever it was. It looked like it was the base of a basketball net, you know, like one of those, mm-hmm. you know, like that you put I in your know. driveway. It looked like he had that. And it was kind of on his head and he was carrying it like this. And. I'm like, is walking that guy? along the well, highway. Well, you don't see the vehicle, right? You just see the guy. And you're like, is that guy just walking on the side of the highway? What the hell's going on? With a thing on his head? And then you see the truck with all the crap in it. And you're like, oh, he didn't tie it down right. That's what happened. <laughs> or at all. And yeah. Oof. All I know is that when we drove through Ohio, I, I was like, damn, people out here are crazy. And that says a lot because I drive like a maniac. Thank you for all the correspondence. Yeah. Good to hear from you. <laughs> Good to hear from you guys. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Has anyone told you how amazing your business website is? I didn't think so. Do you think it's just sort of eh? Websticks, a Midwest family company, has taken thousands of websites from eh to amazing. And you only pay for the help you need with blocks of time that never expire. It's kind of brilliant. That's why we bought the company. Look for Websticks at MidwestFamilyLacrosse.com. Stunning sites. More clicks. Web support from... A Midwest family company.